Hey, good morning, everybody. Well, today we're going to be playing a little game, I thought. We do something a little different. It's always sort of a game, I suppose. We're just playing here. And uh, for those who are new, everything that I ask of you during these sessions is really an invitation. So you can choose to play along or not. Do whatever you like. You're welcome to have your binoculars. And if you see something that you'd like to check out while we're doing our practice, then feel free to just follow your inspiration. Um, so, hi Joy, good to have you. Hello, hello. All right, so today what we'll do is we're gonna get grounded first. So I'll get us into a nice grounded, calm state. And then, and apologies for anyone, um, I do my best to mute the background noises, but I am right by a road. So occasionally you might hear a truck, but I will mute it when, when I'm silent. Um, anyway, what I was gonna say is that um, for our game today, uh, what I'll do is uh, I'm going to get us grounded and then what we'll do is we're going to close our eyes and block our ears. So for just three breaths and I'll remind you of this at the end and then I'll, I'll guide you with what we're going to do with that. But we're going to kind of go through a couple of sessions of that of closing our eyes and blocking our ears for just three breaths and then uh, we'll see what we see or hear. So everyone find a comfortable place to sit. If you're outside, that's great. If you're inside, that's perfectly fine. And if you're inside, sitting next to a window is excellent um, if you're able to do that. And then if you can, even crack the window a little bit so you can hear the natural sounds coming in from outside. Um, and again, it's not essential that you do any of that, but it's just um, a suggestion. So now that you've found your comfy place, I want you to put your feet on the ground, wherever you are, if it's on the earth or on the floor beneath you. And just imagine that you have roots that are extending down from your toes and the soles of your feet into the earth. Just let yourself feel that for a moment. What would it be like right now to be a big giant tree with your roots extending deep into the earth? And as you're tapping into that sensation, allow yourself to bring your breath up from your roots. So you're going to take a nice deep breath in and just imagine that that breath is coming from the earth herself up into your feet, your ankles, your knees, into your hips, your belly, up into your chest, and all the way up to your head and throat. And just let it exhale out your crown. And so do that a couple times, take a couple nice deep breaths. And now, I want you just to take notice of your own breath, noticing how deep or shallow your breath is in this moment, without forcing it to be anything different than it is. Just take stock of what is actually happening in your body. Nice work. And now go ahead and as you're looking out on the landscape, I'd like you to find a point off in the distance to focus on. So something not too far away, but a, a good little distance away. And just maybe it's a branch, maybe it's a little space in between leaves, maybe it's a brick on a house, whatever it might be. Let yourself just really focus your eyes on that one point for a moment here. And now, while you're still focusing on that point in front of you, I'd like you to imagine that your vision is a little droplet of water. So the droplet of water is going to be that point that you're looking at right now. And then your vision is going to expand in all directions around you as if there are ripples on a pond. So 
See how far you can stretch your vision right now. So you're still looking at that one point, but you're also expanding your vision all around you. So up and down, right and left. How far on all of those sides can you actually see right now? And then just notice what happens within your own body and your mind as you start to take in the world in this way. If there's anything that you're inspired to shift right now, maybe your posture, your breath, you can do so. And now while you're still looking in this way, we, some people call this owl eyes, some people call this um, peripheral vision. So as you're sitting here in owl eyes, with your vision expanded and softened, it's really a softened type of vision. I'd like you to now bring your attention to your ears. And first we're gonna notice the loudest sound, that the most prominent sound in your landscapes. So you're still gonna be looking with those softened eyes but now just listening and kind of exploring your landscape with your ears. And once you've identified that loud sound, just let yourself get really curious about it. See what kind of texture it has, what cadence it has, what rhythm it might have. And it's perfectly fine if it's a human-made sound. It doesn't have to just be a bird or nature. And now go ahead and explore the landscape with your ears for a sound that's quite soft and gentle, almost imperceptible. And see if you can listen to that right now. I'm just noticing how those two sounds, the one that's the most prominent and the one that's softer and quieter, noticing if there's a way that they layer with each other, are they connected or are they separate from one another? work. So now just let your eyes, even though we're going to move our eyes a little bit right now, still see if you can stay in owl eyes. So go ahead and let yourself look around your environment. Look up into the sky if you can. Just look in all the directions that you possibly can see right now, but do that with a softened vision. Just seeing if there's anything you might not have noticed before. And I will say, if it's your first time trying out owl eyes, it is effort. Sometimes it's effort to keep your eyes soft because we're so used to keeping our eyes focused. All right, good work. So now that we're all a bit more grounded in our place, we're going to start our practice and our play. So. What I'm gonna invite you to do is, in the next moment, to close your eyes and block your ears if you're feeling like you're in a safe place. And you're gonna take three deep breaths in. So not just yet, but just listen first. You can take three deep breaths in. And on your third breath, when you exhale that third time, what I want you to do is just check in with your body. So this is gonna be a practice to, to really start to learn how to trust ourselves, to trust our intuition. So when you after your third breath after your third exhale you're just going to check in with yourself and see if you're more inspired to open your eyes or your ears which one do you think will will bring you um, something new something interesting something curious on your landscape something that you might really be excited to listen to or to see and just allow your intuition to 
So be your guide during this. And we're going to go through a couple rounds of this. So there's no getting it right or wrong. We're just playing right now. So we'll go ahead and close our eyes and block your ears. Okay, good work, everybody. I'm not sure if you can hear me now. So that's great. So I'll give you a little bit more instruction this time. We're going to do the same thing in just a moment. We'll take three nice deep breaths in. And on your last breath, you're going to just ask a question. Just let the world around you know that there is something magic on your landscape right now, something maybe you haven't seen before, and you're going to ask the world to show it to you, or whether it's through your ears or your eyes. And just trust, just, just play with it, really just have fun. There's no, again, there's no getting it right or getting it wrong. And then I'll let you stay like that. So really just allow yourself, if, if it's a particular direction you're called to look in, then just let yourself look in that direction for a few minutes. And so we'll stay with each of these rounds for maybe like two or three minutes each, just to give you some parameters there. Okay, so go ahead and we'll start our three breaths. Close your ears and your eyes.
Good work, everybody. All right, so you can take your ears, free your ears up and your eyes. Just let yourself look around for a few minutes, or a few moments. And sometimes it might take a couple rounds of this in order to um, really let yourself kind of have the freedom to play with it because it can be our, our mind can be pretty powerful in judgment and whatnot. So, all right, we'll try another round of it and then feel free. I know it can be hard to kind of like hold your hands up to your ears. So if, if it is your eyes that you're inspired to open up, um, see if you can keep your ears blocked for as long as possible, but then feel free to take your hands down if you'd like to after a moment or so. So we'll go ahead and we'll block our eyes and ears again. We'll try this for a couple more minutes. All right, good job. So we're gonna add um, one more layer to this right now. And that is the weather and what is happening in the world around us from a weather perspective. So we're gonna do the same thing where we close our eyes and ears and just check in with our intuition. But this time when you either open your eyes or your ears, I want you to notice the the weather, notice what direction the wind is coming from, notice the temperature that you might feel on your skin. So you're going to be listening or looking, but also being really aware of the sensations on your body. So see if you can hold that place, that, that, that place in between where, you, where you're really sensing in all, uh, using all of your senses except for the one that's blocked. <laughs> all right, let's go again.
Good work, y'all. Okay. So this, this is going to be our last round. And um, this time, you can allow both your eyes and your ears to be open after you take your three breaths. And just do your best to trust the direction you're called to listen in or look in and see how long you can allow yourself to stay looking or listening in that direction. Because sometimes it's easy for our minds to wander if there's no thing to, uh, to be attentive to or that's like, you know, shockingly amazing or really sexy to look at in that moment. So just allow yourself to listen and look as long as you possibly can. So, all right, we'll start our next little round right now. All right, everybody, so take the next moment to offer a sense of gratitude or blessing to whatever it is, whoever it is you interacted with this morning in your own way for just the next moment. All right, so if folks have to go, you're welcome to head out and thank you for coming and joining us today. But if you'd like to stay for our chat at the end, we usually chat for about, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes sometimes. And um, yeah, so I would just love to hear from folks how that was for you. If anything came up for you, if you saw or heard anything that surprised you and just what that journey was like for you to practice that today. So you can just raise your hand if you wanna share.
Okay, Anne and then Claudia. I preferred my eyes opened. So I made myself not do that on, on, on some of them, just to do the other one because closing my ears to the furnace or and opening my eyes was easier. So sometimes we have to do hard. Yeah, and what was that like when you chose the one that was a bit more uncomfortable for you? It just wasn't as enjoyable. Yeah, I, it wasn't as fun. Yeah, yeah, I can understand that for sure. Thanks, yeah. Anne. Mm -hmm. All right, Claudia, go for it. Hey, yeah, um, I found that I enjoyed, you know, doing the eyes on one and then the ears on the other. And actually, I've got a sound that I'm going to hunt down later because I'm trying to figure out it's like a clicking and it's a little bit distance, but I'm going to try to hunt it down today. See what it is. I'm intrigued. But right in the little round, right before you mentioned paying attention to the weather, I was watching the clouds and I was just enjoying them moving across the sky. And then, you know, the second time I was paying even more attention and I had been thinking, oh, the clouds are moving towards the east. And then, but as I really watched, I realized, no, they're going southeast. <laughs> and so I was kind of able to hone that. And it was just fun, to, you know, and to see the different shapes and, you know, as the sky to the northwest gets bluer. And anyway, it was just, that was really fun. Yeah, that's awesome, Claudia. And I love how, um, you know, we can, it can make a quick assumption or judgment about the anything in life, you know, but when you really look more deeply at it, it's like, oh, hang on a second. <laughs> this is what's actually happening. Yeah, right on. All right. Anyone else want to share their experience this morning? Linda, please. Okay. Can you hear me? Okay. Um, well, I, I, I tried both. I tried um, just hearing, letting myself hear things and letting myself see things. And um, both of them were really, really interesting because I heard bird sounds that I don't know what they were. They were in the distance and I still don't know, but um, I'm going to listen a little bit more after this to see if I can uh, figure out what they might be. But I also saw that um, the maple tree, there's a red maple tree here. My, my bird feeders are right here. And there's a red maple tree and a couple of aspen trees. And the red maple and one of the aspen trees, they already have buds on them. I can see the buds and they're not just little. I mean, I can see them. It's a really flat light right now. It's really dense clouds and really cold. It's, it's wintry. We've got about four inches of snow, but I see buds. And that was just so, uh, heartening to see the buds. I love it. Spring's on its way. <laughs> Yay. Yay. That's awesome. I know, especially for all of you all who, uh, who are experiencing winter right now, I can imagine that seeing buds is, is super heartening. And, um, and I love how you went deep with this in that way, you know, and, uh, and I love also just the different sounds that people are talking about hearing right now. So, yay. Um, Julia, I see that your hand is raised. Go for it, please. Well, a couple of things. I, I, the buds, the buds that are prominent this time of year, I believe, are not on trees that browsers would uh, eat from. You know, like the oaks will leave their lower leaves, especially to discourage browsing on on the buds so uh yeah I'm, i still have leaves here and and some of them still haven't taken their rest in the winter i'm all for rest in the winter i rest just let it be <laughs> you know um i i found this the experience i found interesting i think it was when you said notice the weather and and how it feels on your body. I, I don't know if that was it. Anyway, I, when I was paying attention to my body, it was curious to me that I didn't feel the core of my body, which is, you know, if I'm breathing or something like a Tai Chi thing, I feel the, you know, my, the core of my, my body most. 
But this morning, I was feeling my limbs, my arms and my legs, and feeling the support of the chair. And uh, the skin on, you know, was was much more um, alert or something. So I found that. And one more thing that happened this week, um, I learned and I, I thought of you and, and this group uh, when I re- uh, heard it, that there a study at the University of South Carolina discovered, found that people who practice loving kindness and gratitude have better peripheral vision, that, that a person can improve their peripheral vision by meditating or practicing, you know, loving kindness and gratitude. Well, I guess we all get 10 points then. (laughs) (laughs) Go team. (laughs) Nice, everybody. And this was, this was good, you know, scientific research. It wasn't a frou-frou thing. So. (laughs) Right on. Thanks, Julia, for sharing that. I, I love hearing studies and um, when, yeah, when it uh, relates to stuff that we're doing, that's awesome. Thank you. Um, I know for, so there's a uh, firehouse not too far from here, so you'll probably hear that, but I was just going to share. Well, maybe I'll let someone else share. Does anyone else want to share while it's going off? Um, I took our practice. Um, with me through the week. I was taking a walk in the woods the other day after we had a rain and I thought, oh, it's so quiet this afternoon. I didn't hear anything. I said, I'm going to, I'm going to practice, you know, um, our eyes. And I stood in the woods and I looked and I thought, and then I did the allies and then I let my ears do the thing. And I thought, I hear the rain dripping. I hear this. There's a lot of traffic on the road. It's not as quiet as I thought. You know, there were so many sounds and things to see just when you're walking in the woods, you stop. It's like, it's not as quiet as you think it is. Yeah, yeah. I, I had that for me this morning um, that kind of plays into a little bit of what my experience was. You know, I asked the question of just like, what 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 magic is there for me to see or hear this morning? And, um, and I ended up looking right in front of me at the grass and I was just like, okay, nothing's happening. And then all of a sudden it was really, it felt really profound. It was like, oh, the grass, like that's alive. And it just felt like I could almost like feel the earth breathing right there. And then I saw this little, now it doesn't look like a flower, but the way the light was on it, it actually looks like one of these like taller pieces of grass looked like it had a little flower on it, but might've just been the way the light was. But it just, again, it's just like life right there in front of me and and just how profound the grass can be, you know? And, And I had the same thing happen where Um, I was called to look up at one point and it was the sun and I was like, of course, like you're magic, you're amazing, you know, like all these little things. And, and the last one that I had was I looked at the neighbor's yard and there was, um, they're not arborvitaes, but there's some kind of little shrub that's a common, you know, sort of planted tree in someone's yard. And so it's nothing like extraordinary in the way that we might think but there was the the wind was blowing so so subtly and like one of its branches was just moving like this almost like it was just like waving to me you know like nothing else was moving except this one little branch that was just going like this and i thought just felt like this real personal connection like this with this individual tree not just like the whole forest over there but this one tree and now i feel this kinship and this connection with this one little tree over there you know that's like again it's sort of this domestic plant that people put to like is a barrier in their their yards and um but again it's one of those things like when we when we go looking for the magic i feel like the magic starts to show itself to us and even in some of the really subtle but more profound ways where we start to see the for me where i start to see the the depth of what's around me and not just looking at it like ah it's just a domestic plant you know like who cares kind of thing it's like no that's an individual right there you know it's a really beautiful profound being and um and yeah and then i did hear some cool bird sounds like these really subtle ones and i thought that's cool you know like my eyes are closed i really do hear some of the subtle subtle like quiet bird sounds that i um, might be easy to miss when my eyes are open you know yeah what you looking up linda Um, I thought I saw a chestnut back chickadee at my bird feeder. So I was just looking it up that it possibly was. I'm not 100% sure. You know, I I pulled up my binoculars, but by then, you know how chickadees are. It was 
So, but possibly was, I don't know. The good news is, is that if it's at your feeder and it's a chickadee, it's likely going to come back. So <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Awesome. Claudia, go for it. Uh, yeah, I just, uh, I just had a murder of crows come, <laughs> come into the trees across the yard and they were just right out in the street in front of me. There's about 20 of them. They've been kind of coming and going, but that's, that's really fun. But the other day I took a walk, I was looking for a vermilion flycatcher that was supposed to be down by Utah Lake. I'm in just south of uh, Salt Lake in Utah. And um, anyway, I took this walk and I, I've been out there a couple of times and I have not seen the vermilion flycatcher, but this time I saw a kestrel and I saw Northern flickers and I saw a bunch of different little sparrows, which they were so quick, I couldn't recognize which ones they were. And I saw bald eagles, which was really exciting. So it was fun to, it was just a fun walk. I didn't get what I wanted, but I was also trying to do the, you know, just the owl eyes and that helped me to see more things. Yeah. And thank you for sharing that both of you. And um, I think it was Anne um, who just mentioned that you're bringing this practice into your real birding life, you know, and um, and it's, it's, yeah, it's nice to hear your stories in that way and hear how, um, how it affects you or what it might, you know, open up for you when you're, when you're out there. I think it's nice to hear. Again, something I like to remind people of is that some of the practices that we do here, you know, at times it may seem as though it has nothing to do with birds and, you know, maybe more about meditation or whatever. But really, I, I am a firm believer that all of it is connected. And I think these practices make us better birders. And, you know, like Julia, or again, I'm sorry if it wasn't Julia who was saying the study. We were talking about the study, right, Julia? Yeah, who talked about the study and how it can, you know, this type of practice can help, you know, help our peripheral vision and that helps us become better birders. And so it's just beautiful how it's all it's all connected. And I love playing in this way with all of you each week. It's really such a beautiful thing. Well, does anyone else have anything else you want to share before we go? I want to give everyone a chance if they want to say something. Y'all good? All right. Well, and be sure to read the chat if you have a moment. There's a couple people that put some words in the chat and um, if you want to. But uh, thanks for joining me. And um, I was wondering if there's anything I wanted to tell you all about. No, no pressing stories. I just, I hope you all had a good holiday and uh, we'll see you next week. All right. Thanks everybody. Have a good one. Okay, bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.